Today we're going to talk about the advantage of a mute switch for swapping out harmonicas or mics or guitars. I bought this switch hoping to achieve that where I could plug in two different microphones and switch them on the fly, but this is what you hear across the speakers. That popping. Highly irritating. Oh, gee, that wasn't good. Don't like it, don't appreciate it, and especially when you're dealing with a microphone. This wasn't as effective as I needed to, and just even wasn't for the momentary feedback. The clicking is not what I desire to hear, nor anyone else. What's the proper way of swapping out a microphone? Well, the safest thing to do is come over to the amp that's turned on, 70 watts playing, or you're going through the PA system, it's unplugged from the amp. There's no clack boom, no clack boom. You can touch the cord because nothing's being amplified. It's the safest thing to do. But the amp is probably behind you several feet. The pedal board's exactly where you're, you're staying to play, and you need to swap out. How many times has this happened to you? Oh. This is what gets your name known to everybody. It's probably not on your birth certificate what they're about to call you. Across the auditorium, on the stage, across your amps, you can hear that, and there's got to better, be a better way. So I put together a mute switch. I want to demonstrate that for you today. Very inexpensive, 60 bucks worth of parts, probably an hour and a half of your time to put it together. Highly effective. This is the sw uh, stomp switch itself, the mute. This goes to either the amp, the sound system to wherever you're playing, to the pedal board. This is live, and this is the side you will not unplug once it's plugged in. This side is where you plug in your guitar, your instrument, your microphone. I parallel wired where I can have tip ring sleeve connector or an XLR standard connection. This device works with either... Um, those devices requiring uh, phantom power because it passes it straight through. Um, high impedance, low impedance, it just doesn't make any difference. Basically, this is a one hertz filter. So anything over one hertz, it cuts the, uh, the pop out. And that's what all the other noise is, is the pop, hum, clack, boom feature that you really don't want to hear. The only reason there's an LED is that when it's red, this side's uh, dead. If it's green, it's live. It's just an indicator. You don't have to have it. Doesn't make much difference. So let's uh, show you how this thing works, and then we'll show you the circuit a little bit later. Mute switch in operation. No LED bars. Its red light says we're dead. No signal. Signal. Off. Out with the shaker. Back with the green bullet. Back on again. Only thing you're hearing is nothing because it mutes. Let's talk about the circuit so you can build one yourself. These are frequency filters. The one on the right is a high pass frequency filter. Frequencies below a certain design point are cut off. The one on the left is a high pass frequency filter. Anything above 1 Hz is cut off. The values are set for the resistor, 150 ohms, the capacitor is 1000 microfarad. You probably won't find 1000 microfarad non-polarized. That's important. So you take two 470s, connect negative to positive and positive to negative, effectively is a non-polarized electrolytic capacitor at that point. It's, again, it's designed to cut off frequencies above 1 Hz. Notice the placement between the resistor and capacitor. When they're switched position, that's what makes the difference between a high and a low pass filter. This is the circuit that has been designed with a low frequency filter. 
you'll notice that from pin 2 on the left, the input or the mic is connected to that first 150. It goes to pin 2 of the XLR, which goes to the PA or to the amp. Pin 3 also has 150 on it. As we'll see in a later slide, the 1000 microfarad and the 150, which is connected to the 2 pin, are, is the low frequency filter. Because this also can handle phantom power, phantom power is connecting 48 volts to pin 2 and 48 volts to pin 3. The voltage has to stay the same, but if you only put the resistor in on pin 2, it will drop the voltage and it will be lower voltage than that's coming off of pin 3. So we put one on pin 3. They need to be matched fairly closely because in an XLR circuit, if the signal's a little different, it will cancel out. Also, if the voltage is different, more importantly, uh, when you pull the instrument or the mic out on the input, it'll pop on you. You don't want to do that. Notice the switch is open. The 10,000 the 10,000 ohm resistor and the 1,000 microfarad capacitor also has another function when the switch is open. Again, because we may be handling phantom power, this circuit, the 10,000, allows the capacitor to charge up and somewhat stabilize the voltage between pin 2 and pin 3 downstream of the 150 ohm capacitor. If you're, you design for 10,000 ohms and you're pulling in and out the mic and there's a slight pop, you may need the adjusted value of the 10K resistor. Best thing to do there is to put a fixed 5,000 ohm resistor in and a variable 5,000 ohm potentiometer, in which case then you can adjust the potentiometer until there's no pop. The instant the switch is slammed shut in electronics, it's slamming the door shut. There's a decoupling capacitor. It has nothing to do with the low-pass filter. This 0.1 ceramic microfarad capacitor and the 150 ohm resistor are in series now at an instant. That decoupling capacitor eliminates the pop or the noise, the spark that the switch may generate. Actually, it's storing a little bit of energy and releases it in order to keep that voltage sort of maintained. It's sort of an accumulator to make sure there's no pop. Finally, this is the muted position. When the switch is shut, the coupling capacitor has done its job, there is no pop. The 150 ohm resistor and the 1000 microfarad capacitor, as you see shown in blue, eliminate any signal above 1 Hertz. You're not going to hear 1 Hertz. It's subtone. There won't be any buzz. You're not going to hear that either. Effectively, line 2 goes dead. Line 3 is still playing. And for a balanced circuit, line 2 is 0. Line 3 has signal on it. But on a balanced circuit, it will be ignored because both signals have to be equal on 2 and 3, otherwise rejection circuits will just ignore pin 3. If you're using a dynamic microphone, in which case pin 3 actually is touching the sleeve, which is also ground, and the tip is the only signal source, this thing works the same way. You don't have to worry about line 3, the signal is going through line 2. And this cutoff frequency does the same thing. This filter does the same thing. It eliminates the signal. The switch is effectively muted. This is what it looks like on the inside. The XLRs, Neutronic. I like the uh, gold plate. Uh, contacts, a pair of those. About 10 bucks for a pair. Five bucks for a pair for our stereo quarter-inch jacks tip ring sleeve. Eight bucks for the stomp switch, which is a double throw three pole. That allows me to use either side of one one of the poles to change the state of the light from red to cold, to on. Fifty cents for an LED. Two bucks for the switch. 
17 bucks for the box. Not much to it. Wiring simple. Time you drill the holes. You need a 5 16th inch hole for the XLRs. You need a 3 8 inch hole for the stereo connectors. You need a half inch hole drilled for the stomp switch. It takes about oh hour and a half, two hours to put one of these things together. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you get something out of it. There you have a, a popless mute switch. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe. Thanks again.